Funding for this edition of State of Affairs with Steve Adubato has been provided by Hackensack Meridian Health. Keep getting better. New Jersey Sharing Network. The Turrell Fund. Supporting Reimagine Child Care. PSENG. Committed to providing safe, reliable energy now and in the future. The New Jersey Board of Public Utilities Clean Energy Program. Operating Engineers, Local 825. Choose New Jersey. IBEW Local 102. Lighting the path, leading the way. And by Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Globe. And by ROINJ. Informing and connecting businesses in New Jersey. Hi, everyone. I'm Steve Adubato. Uh, we kick off the show with something we're uh, honored to have once again. She's United States Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill, representing the 11th Congressional District. Congresswoman, great to have you with us. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, we are taping on the 16th of November. It'll be seen a little bit later. First of all, in advance, happy Thanksgiving. I will like it. The president says in this bill signing of this $1 trillion infrastructure deal, right, America is moving again. Be specific and precise. What does, hate to be so crass, what does New Jersey get out of this? <laughs> that's what I'm always asking. It's not crass at all. I, I think that's a really fair question, Steve, because as you know, New Jersey gives more and generally gets less from the federal government than any state in the nation. Um, we tie for the bottom with New York usually. And so to ask what are we getting from this, I think is an incredibly fair question. And the answer is for once a really great answer, almost more than than any other region in the nation. Why? Name a couple of projects. Yeah, I'm, I would love to. And the first project I'm going to name, because I've been um, incessantly fighting for this for a couple of years now, is the Gateway Tunnel Project. This is the nation's biggest infrastructure investment, most significant project, will impact the most amount of people, many of them right here in New Jersey. That is a critical investment. Um, we are also going to invest in remediating our lead pipes, which we've been working on. Um, we have some of the oldest water infrastructure in the nation. We want to make sure that everybody in the district gets access to clean, safe drinking water. Um, we're also going to invest in remediating PFAS uh, because that is a contaminant left over by many of our Superfund sites. As you know, we have more Superfund sites in New Jersey than anywhere else in the nation. So we want to remediate that. And then we also are investing in an electric car charging grid across the state, which again, our biggest carbon emitter are our cars. So doing that in our state will have immediate ramifications for our clean environment. Real quick on child care. We've talked to you about this many times. We're involved in an initiative called Reimagine Child Care. Any money in this or the other legislation for child care from the feds? Yeah, so this was uh, the infrastructure bill, which was just signed into law today that I just described. That was an incredibly exciting moment uh, as we got the Gateway Tunnel project finally signed into law. The uh, We are also working on another bill, which um, I have been focused on, what are some of the greatest economic impacts we can have on North Jersey? And so, of course, for me, as a mother of four and a resident of New Jersey, that's salt and that's child care. And State so and local what, tax deduction capped at 10 grand? Uh, lifting that. That, is, right. that has been something that has impacted too many of my families, has made the cost of living um, already a difficult barrier to entry for too many families, even higher. So remediating salt, making sure we're getting rid of that cap, um, which I've been working incredibly hard on. And I think, you know, we've got a fix uh, that we're ready to put forth for this second bill, but also child care. Because as you know from your work in this area um, and looking at the jobs numbers, 
I'll tell you, I go to my small businesses all the time. And what I hear again and again and again is they are having workforce shortages. And one of the largest groups of people that are not reentering our workforce are our parents. Too many times our moms who just don't have access to the childcare that they need at an affordable price. And believe me, as a working mom in New Jersey of four kids, it is a struggle. It was a struggle before the pandemic. And now we're looking at five children for every one spot in childcare in New Jersey. A very direct connection between childcare, um, adequate, accessible, affordable childcare, quality childcare, and the economy. Let me ask you real quick, uh, can I get a number on this? Do you have a sense of what the, if in fact the state and local tax deduction cap currently at $10,000, um, President Trump at the time, said that's what it should be. Certain states, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, real coincidence, I imagine, um, got hurt real bad on that. Not sure of the reasons for it. What do you think the number will be now if it's not 10 grand? You know, uh, I think it'll be around 80 grand, which will cover just about everyone in the district. And this is something that um, I have been uh, constantly fighting for. It's uh, something that Bernie Sanders has has taken out of the legislation again and again, and myself and Josh Gottheimer and Tom Swazi of Long Island have added it back again and again and again. Yeah. So listen, I'm going to do Veterans Affairs with you because it, you're, you're a veteran, and thank you, most importantly, for your service. And I will go back to that in a second, but I want to ask you this. Every time you're with us, I ask you this. Um, why did it take so long for the Democrats who control the United States Senate the House of Representatives and the White House to get any of this done, and it's all not done yet, A, and B, how devastating was that in the November 2nd election for Democrats um, in Virginia, New Jersey, and in other places who were having to explain why the Democrats in Washington couldn't get anything done that mattered? It's a loaded question, I know, but it's pretty embarrassing in the eyes of many. So, Steve, I would be lying if I didn't say that I had been incredibly frustrated over the past several months at the path leading to this. I will say, however, that if you take a step back and think about the fact that we have just passed the largest investment in our infrastructure in generations, and that we did so in one of the most partisan times our nation has seen in my lifetime, and that we did so with a very slim majority, and that we did so in a bipartisan way. I, I mean, I, I have to tell you that people in my district want Washington to work. They want us to come together on these investments for the American people. And it has been tricky to carry that out because that's what I committed to. I said, look, when you got on my helicopter, nobody was asking if you were a Democrat or a Republican, right? That was not how- you, Hold on, you mean your helicopter me. when you served in the military? Exactly. You didn't exactly. mean your private helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> I would get to Washington a lot faster, Just Steve. want to clarify. Although I love the Acela. I love the Acela. I love the trains, but- Oh, now um, Amtrak's yes. getting credit. Go ahead. Amtrak got money in this as well. Go ahead. Amtrak, yes, Amtrak did very well in this, which is going to be great for New Jersey. But um, but this was a commitment I made, you know, making sure that I'm working across the aisle to get to deliver for New Jersey. And we did that. We I just sat at the signing ceremony yesterday at the White House with Republicans, with infrastructure officials, with union members to pass the largest investment in our nation's infrastructure, because I have heard again and again and again. Mikey, what's going on? Our nation led the world in infrastructure and now it's an embarrassment. That will no longer be the case for future generations. You run in 2022. Um, the mood of the electorate, listen, we don't do polls. We're not interested so much in horse race stuff, but right now every poll I've seen shows that if the election were held today, um, that the Republicans hold a significant advantage approximately 10 percentage points in terms of wanting to vote Republican versus Democrat in general in congressional races. Does that matter to you, A, and B, do you basically believe that all congressional districts come down to the district, the candidate, the incumbent, and the politics at the time? Well, uh, that would be a little bit naive to think that it's just, you know, if you just deliver and you just run a good race, then, you know, all, everything else will solve itself. But that's what, to a large extent, you have to do as a candidate, because there are things 
things I can control and things I can't, but the one thing I've committed to and that I have kept as my North Star is how can I fulfill my commitments to New Jersey? How can I deliver for our district? How can I make the lives better of people in our district? And you sort of alluded to this. People are going through tough times. Um, you know, I, I have to tell you as a parent, it was devastating to have our children go through in their formative years and some of their most vulnerable years, the past couple of years of COVID and, and really watching them then get back. And it's not like it just turns on a dime. It's not that we suddenly get our kids back to in-person school and they're back on the honor roll and their mental health is great and they're, you know, engaged with their friends again. It's a process and we're in that now. And it's my job to make sure that I am addressing all of the speed bumps in the road for my families, making sure that they have access to mental health care, making sure that they have child cares they're trying to get back to work, making sure that as they go back to work, their commute's easier so they can spend more time with their families. These are the things that I am focused on. And um, you know, these are the things I told my district I would do. These are the things I'm working on. And these are the things I'm proud to say I'm now delivering for the district. Congresswoman, give us a minute or less on the veterans affairs initiatives that are so important to you. And by the way, tell everyone specifically what your service was. Sure. So I served, uh, I went to the Naval Academy and then served almost 10 years as a Navy helicopter pilot and a Russian policy officer. Um, and I'll tell you, I just had, as, as a member of the House Armed Services Committee, I just had the real honor of going to Qatar which was the country that was most important to our Afghanistan evacuation. Dude, was that, um, hold on, before you go any further, um, you understand military logistics. Was the Afghanistan withdrawal uh, a debacle or something less? There were many, many issues with our withdrawal from Afghanistan. And on the House Armed Services Committee, we are committed to um, taking a holistic look at Afghanistan. How did we get into it? How did we prosecute that war? How did we get out of it and where the faults were and where the problems were? Because that's critically important to going forward and making sure our military never repeats past mistakes. Great, go back um, to your service again. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, so I was just in Qatar um, and I met with our troops. And I have to tell you that it was right before Veterans Day. And of course on Veterans Day, we thank our troops. Um, we have a Thanksgiving holiday card writing event for our veterans to thank them. We're always thanking our troops. But oftentimes when we think of that, we're thinking of their service in battle. We're thinking of our combat veterans. We're thinking of those who've died in battle. We're not always remembering the day-to-day -day sacrifice of our veterans. And I can tell you, I saw it on full display in Qatar. I saw men and women who were apart from their families for over a year. While there is a, a lovely city in Qatar where our base is, is not in that city. It is in an area um, of desert, just cracked earth desert. There's an airstrip and a bunch of buildings and not much else. And our men and women are serving there away from their families for over a year. And I couldn't have been more proud of their professionalism, their compassion, because they were helping the Afghan refugees through an incredibly tough time as they were waiting there for the final determination of their status. Um, thoughtful, compassionate, proud of their work despite the hardships. And as we say in the military, you know, when a member serves, their whole family serves. So not only are those, those service members serving in Qatar, but their family members are going through holidays and Thanksgiving and Christmas alone. So it's really a heavy lift for, for these men and women, but I could not have been more proud of them. Let me ask you something. Um, article in, I still read newspapers, talk about old school. Um, reading an article on the Associated Press by Jill Colvin, C-O-L-V-I-N, check it out. Um, Republican leaders say little to condemn rhetoric laced with violence. Look, I don't care which politics are, that's everyone's business. But Congressman uh, Paul Gosar of Arizona, he put out um, a meme, a doctored meme, you know what it was. It was uh, a cartoon where he was shown uh, murdering. Uh, Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez says, come on, it's a cartoon. What are you making a big deal about this for? How concerned are you, particularly given your military service and you're fighting for representative democracy? There's a question here, I promise. How concerned are you about post-January 6th political violence, including members of the New Jersey congressional delegation um, 
who voted Republicans, who voted for this infrastructure bill, who many others, Republicans, are saying, you are traitors. You did a horrible thing. You were not with us. You were with Biden. There are members of Congress not running for Congress because they're afraid for their families. Am I making too much of this? No, I, I think, you know, I was on the floor of the House when it was attacked. I was face down. With, on January 6th. On January 6th with my cell phone in one hand and a gas mask in the other as angry crowds tried to break down the door of the House chamber to attack members of Congress as we were performing our constitutional duty. I never in my life thought I would be in the Capitol as it was attacked by other Americans. I could not have contemplated that even several years ago. And so I am concerned about the, um, the incitement to violence of our electorate. I am Including concerned members of Congress threatening other members of Congress. I am concerned that, that that is seen by too many people in this country as somehow okay or appropriate. Um, and I'm concerned not just for our democracy. I'm concerned about our children and the message this sends to them. And that is why, you know, I remind people again and again and again that every single one of us has taken an oath to our Constitution. That means we believe in the values of this democracy and we are committed to upholding them. And if you cannot fulfill that, then you have no place in the United States House of Representatives or really anywhere in the government of the United States. That is United States Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill from the 11th Congressional District. Um, I want to thank you once again for joining us. We appreciate your thoughts and your candor, and we look forward to future discussions. Thank you, Congresswoman. Thanks for having me. I'm Steve Adubato. Stay with us. We'll be right back. To see more State of Affairs with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at stateofaffairsnj.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD, and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Hi, I'm Joe Roth. In New Jersey, there are nearly 4,000 residents in need of a life-saving organ transplant, and one person dies every three days waiting for this gift of life. One organ and tissue donor can save eight lives and enhance the lives of over 75 people. You have the power to make a difference and give hope. For information or to become an organ and tissue donor, visit www.njsharingnetwork.org. And be sure to talk with your family and friends about this life-saving decision. Every day, nearly 2 million customers across New Jersey rely on PSE&G to provide natural gas. And every day, PSE&G is committed to doing it safely. That includes making sure you know what to do if you smell gas. A natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs. If you suspect a gas leak, leave your home immediately. Get far away, then call 911. Remember, smell, leave, call. Protect the ones you love. Learn more at psegcom slash gas safety. We're honored to be joined by um, State Senator Steve Orojo. He is the, as we do this program at the end of 2021, he's about to become the Senate Minority Leader in the Upper House of the State Senate. Congratulations, Senator. Well, Steve, thank you very much. Glad to be here. How many years have you been in the legislature, by the way? This is actually my uh, 14th year. 14th. I was in for two very short, unimpressive years. I just want to clarify that. No, no. That's got nothing well, to do you, with anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're hey, doing listen, good do, stuff now. Yeah, all good. Hey, listen, biggest message from the November 2nd, 2021 election, biggest message you take away from it and voters should take away from it. Well, I think, Steve, I think what voters said loud and clear is that they were, they were tired of being told what they could and can't do uh, for now going on 20, 20 months. And I think it was basically, you know, uh, keep your hands off my children and uh, don't you know, keep your hands out of my pocket. OK, so the tax issue is one thing. The governor did say in an ad that Jack Chitterelli ran more than a few times. If taxes are your issue, New Jersey's probably not your state, but hands off the children. I want to clarify this. So you're saying that even though there are vaccines that are mandated for virtually for every child that, that to go to kindergarten, that a vaccine for COVID that the government is overstepping? I'm confused here. Well, no, no. What I'm there isn't a mandate. No, no there is no mandate. Uh, listen, I'm, listen, I'm vaccinated. I do believe in, in personal, you know, the personal choice of the vaccine. 
Um, quite frankly, I think people don't trust government. Steve, you know that. People just don't trust government. We probably have better vaccination rates. They're, they're going up. We probably have better vaccination rates if, you know, uh, we we're providing the education piece and government wasn't mandating because, let's face it, people just don't trust government for, a, you know, for a number of reasons. Do they trust science? I would hope, you know, listen, the idea of science, if people have to, you know, be, you know, be educated to it, I think most people do trust the science. I think most people are, are very uh, thankful that we had very smart people who came up with a vaccine very quickly, came up with testing, came up with a vaccine very quickly. But also, let's face it, it's, it's only been a matter of, you know, when you look at it in time, months that the vaccine has been has been out there so it's it, it's going to take a little time for people to get you know some people get comfortable with it and now the vaccination rates obviously are going up um now children you know five i think it's five and older can get a vaccine you know, can five get to a 11, vaccination. Right. yeah right. so I, I i think more and more people are seeing that it is successful uh the scientists knew it was successful um i have scientists in my family and quite frankly, they got us comfortable with it, you know, the, the kind of testing that had to be done. So I, I do think that as science tells people, as doctors tell people uh, what they need to do, I think that's a lot more effective than government saying, you got to do this. Senator, let's do this. Economic issues. Describe the governor, Governor Murphy's relationship, as you believe it'll play out with the state legislature, particularly around fiscal issues in his second term. Well, you see, hopefully the, the governor got the message that, you know, people want, you know, reforms to be done. I know, you know, I, I, I worked on the path to progress to have the reforms done. You know, I've been... You mean very... fiscal reforms in the state so that we get our fiscal house in order? Correct. I've, I've been talking about New Jersey being more, needing to be more competitive in, in every year since I've been down in the legislature. So I'm going to be clear here. Um, in the governor's second term, there are a whole range of issues that are important, but one of them, and I'm going to disclose this, we've been talking about uh, child care for a long time, um, and we have a series called Reimagine Child Care. Let me ask you this question, Senator. Do you believe there's a direct link between uh, adequate, affordable child care and government subsidies supporting that and an economic recovery? Yeah, as far as the uh, subsidies for it, listen, I do believe that child care is extremely important. I do believe that there's obviously a private industry that, that's out there. Some people need to, uh, some help in order to do it. Uh, I've been supportive of child care credits uh, with respect to, you know, for the tax, including tax credits. Uh, in tax credits, including refundable credits. Uh, so yeah, I have been I have been supportive of that. I am supportive of you know just like I was uh, one of the sponsors to help increase the earned income tax credit. I yep, do believe. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, no, you did. Go ahead. I'm sorry for interrupting. I do. I do believe in in the idea of helping people to work. Um, you know, whether it be through child care tax credits, whether it be through earned income tax credits, that sort of thing. I do believe rewarding work is is the way we should go. Yeah. Senator, I've asked everyone about this because I have this obsession about uh, protecting our democracy, and I'm not the only one, but I believe we in the media have an important role. Yep. January 6th was an important event, that insurrection at, at the Capitol around that, and the so-called big lie around the 2020 election. A, you, some of your thoughts about January 6th, and B, you never bought into the big lie, did you? That Joe Biden did not win that election? No, the idea that, listen, the idea that that we have to have voter integrity, I've, I've been sponsors of a bill for voter integrity. I do think that too many rules were changed, and, and obviously we were doing it during a pandemic. But right. when, uh, my biggest issue was this, Steve, was is if you could go to a grocery store, you could go to, you know, the drugstore, you, you could go to a bar, a restaurant, but you couldn't go in, you know, vote in person type of thing. And I had, I had a real issue with that. And I do think there are things that we need to do to make sure that our voter voting rolls are, you know, are, you know, are clean, are, are, you know, um, that only eligible people are there to vote. And I, I do think that that's important. However, however, at the same time, so many rules had changed and therefore people didn't trust what government was doing for a whole host of reasons. Now, 
I believe that we have to, as Republicans, whatever the rules of the whatever the rules of the game are, we have to play by the rules and we have to educate our voters, as many of our counties did in this last election, and people got comfortable or more comfortable with, with the, the mail-in ballots or the in-person voting. And we have to make sure that they're educated and comfortable with that. And that's our responsibility. And the time we have, Jack Shitterelli made sure that Donald Trump did not come in and campaign for him for governor. Um, did that matter in the outcome? Because Trump is not particularly popular in New Jersey? No, I, what, what I do think mattered very much in, in, in the election was all the executive orders and all the mandates here, right here in New Jersey, that people you mean were Murphy, tired of. Governor Murphy's executive orders. Correct. And I do think that if the legislature, and you know, I, you know, twice I stood up on the Senate floor to take away some of the, the uh, governor's powers, not only this governor, any governor, to keep extending executive orders. The majority party, the Democrat Party, tabled each one. They tabled it when Senator Tessa did it. They tabled it when Senator Darty did it. They tabled it when, when Senator uh, Panaccio did it. And I think if they had um, actually taken some of those limitations and passed it in the Senate, you know, um, you know, s some of the results may have been different. You believe that? You, you, you believe that the outcome would have been different if that discussion would have take, gone forward? Well, I, I, I do think, well, quite frankly, people are sick and tired of just one individual for 20 months having this kind of power. Even in a crisis, Senator? Windows. Even in a crisis like this? Well, it was, it was a crisis, but, but Steve, look how uneven it was throughout the whole state. You had South Jersey and North, up by me, in North Jersey was significantly different than it was in other parts of the state. But, you mean but the yeah, COVID was, rate? The, the COVID rates were different sure. every part of the state. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. And listen, everybody likes to, the, the whole idea of being. You know, I come from a very beautiful section of the state where, you know, going outside and being socially distant is something we do every day. I want to thank Senator Steve Orojo and congratulate him for becoming the new Republican leader in the state Senate, New Jersey. Steve, all the best to you, Senator. All the best to you and your family. Thanks, Steve. Same to you. Thank you. You got it. I'm Steve Adubato. See you next time. To see more State of Affairs with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at stateofaffairsnj.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD. And follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Hackensack Meridian Health, New Jersey Sharing Network, the Turrell Fund, supporting Reimagine Child Care, PSE&G, the New Jersey Board of Public Utilities Clean Energy Program. Operating Engineers, Local 825. Choose New Jersey. IBEW Local 102. Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters. And by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State. And by Employers Association of New Jersey. Promotional support provided by New Jersey Globe and by R-O-I-N-J. Hi, I'm Joe Roth. In New Jersey, there are nearly 4,000 residents in need of a life-saving organ transplant, and one person dies every three days waiting for this gift of life. One organ and tissue donor can save eight lives and enhance the lives of over 75 people. You have the power to make a difference and give hope. For information or to become an organ and tissue donor, visit www.njsharingnetwork.org and be sure to talk with your family and friends about this life-saving decision. To watch more State of Affairs with Steve Adubato, find us online and follow us on social media. Every day, nearly 2 million customers across New Jersey rely on PSCNG to provide natural gas. And every day, PSCNG is committed to doing it safely. That includes making sure you know what to do if you smell gas. A natural gas leak smells like rotten eggs. If you suspect a gas leak, leave your home immediately. Get far away, then call 911. Remember, smell, leave, call.
Protect the ones you love. Learn more at PSCG.com slash gas safety. To watch more State of Affairs with Steve Adubato, find us online and follow us on social media.